The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, legendary punk rock band The Bun Moans. <laughs> this week on the Pokemon Film Podcast, I feel, I feel like since you're splitting up the, the the podcast into different segments that I that I then need to repeatedly mention the name of the show over and over again. Okay. I, feel like, I feel like I've said the title like 15 times so far in this episode. <laughs> anyway, this week on The Big Show, The Big Show, which just so happens to be called The Pope on Film Podcast, The Pope on Film Podcast, The Pope on Film! Church Podcast. Organist. This week we are once again attempting to cash in on a popular trend. This is something that we have done oh so many times before on the big show. There are popular things in in, in America, in pop culture, in society, and we catch in on those by doing an episode around them. For example, we did a show on the animated film Victory Through Air Power solely to cash in on that strange period in 2015 where America's teens were into animated Nazi fighting. Mm -hmm. Very weird. Kids were just really into animated Nazi fighting for a while, and now it's fidget spinners. So go figure. You know? <laughs> it's just weird. Kids, you just, you just, you, you just don't get them. You just don't get them. Uh, young kids are way too young. They are. Yeah. yeah. Young kids are just way too young. We also did the Death of Richie episode to cash in on Robbie Benson fever. Yes. Man, Robbie, Robbie Benson fever. So many young girls just have Robbie Benson pictures in their locker, you know? Well, definitely a resurgence for Robbie Benson unexpected but de but definitely a resurgence oh yeah okay if you're going to be throwing your food like that eleanor then you're getting off of your chair because you're just being like a little high holy terror right now so <laughs> there you go you are off now why don't you go and terrorize maxwell or maybe uh bella they're very uh easy to terrify then, of course, we did the episode uh, with the movie It Happened to Jane mm -hmm. on the rising trend, on the rising trend in college educa educated 20 and 30 somethings to have sex with lobsters. Uh huh. Yeah. Big, big uh, resurgence in the world of lobster fetishes. And there was a did... lot of there was a lot of fapping material in that Doris Day movie. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You know, and of course, you know what was so hot about the lobsters? Huh. No rubber bands. Oh, that gets that gets me rock hard. Mm -hmm. It's like tan yeah. lines, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, there was our recent episode where for four hours we just quietly played with fidget spinners. Mm -hmm. That was our silent episode. That was our silent episode. All you heard is just the spinning of. The well, that's the one we got the award. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from uh, uh, Fidget Spinners Monthly. Yeah. Then we've also done some episodes based on older, more archaic movies, films no one ever has ever heard of, like uh, Jurassic World, Guardians of the Galaxy, La La Land, and uh, Spinal Tarp. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, Spinal Tap. I pronounced yeah. that wrong. I pronounced that. I think I pronounced that wrong. I'm not sure. No one's ever seen that. At least according to the people whose job it is to pay the actual members of Spinal Tap. <laughs> and so this week's movie is yet another cheap attempt to cash in on a trend by shitting all over this week's easily shat upon film, the 2007 surefire hit turned meme machine B-movie. B-movie. My B God. B-movie. I, I have not I have not seen any memes or much about B movie. Well, um, I have, and uh, Maxwell has, and we're going to be talking about that. I know that later. boy. I don't know the B movie. Yeah. Stop, Maxwell! Stop! Stop! Stop pretending to hit her with that 
pillow. Okay, this is all gonna end badly. Okay, I have psychic mind power. Stop trying to hit her with that pillow. Okay. Okay, I will take that pillow away from you. That is my pillow. That is my special space pillow, and I love it very much. Stop playing around with it. It's not a steel chair. You are not a lucha. <laughs> Um, for a long time, I've been trying to come up with a good way to say this, so I'm just going to come out and say it. Okay. B-movie is too Jewish. Uh, yeah. Now, I didn't really, it's been, a, it's been a million years since I've seen The Graduate, though, so all of that went over my head. Now, let me try and explain how what I said is not anti-Semitic. I would say the same thing if in Kung Fu Panda... <laughs> Poe the panda loved two things, eating and sharing the Bible with his fellow animals. Mm -hmm. I would say, fuck, that is too Christian, just like this film is just a bit too Jewish. Yeah. The extreme Jewishness of the film, the film spends a lot of time dealing with issues of race and religion for a DreamWorks animated fucking movie. Yes. And, and I think for the convoluted relationship we had going on here. Oh yeah. Oh hell yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I think that the overt Jewishness of the film cuts to the core problem with B movie. Besides its existence as a clunky Pixar wannabe, because this movie really does it really is just like a like like Well, I have I have a different core in mind. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 core is more like Jerry Seinfeld thought he could just toss out a lot of jokes and it would just be a movie without them really being strung together on anything. Yeah. So um I think the problem with B movie is that most really great kids' movies are first and foremost great movies for kids that also happen to speak a bit to adults in the audience, mm -hmm. whereas B-Movie seems to have just been written by a 55-year-old Jewish comedian with no prior screenwriting experience. B-Movie seems to first and foremost be written specifically for adults with the hopes that kids might also like it. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Kids don't know who the hell Larry King is. Kids won't understand Chris Rock's very racist scene about how mosquito girls don't want to hook up with mosquito men. Mm -hmm. Kids kids don't know who Ray Liotta is. No. Kids don't know that. Kids does, won't... does he really have a honey? Is there a Ray Liotta honey? Is that no. a thing? No. But, like, yeah, you don't need to add real-life Ray Liotta into this kids' movie, you know? Yeah. Kids won't get the homages to The Graduate. Kids aren't going to relate to a young man unsure about his career. Like, what the hell, Jerry Seinfeld? Mm-hmm. Why was this movie made? You know? Yeah. And how can he live? in B society all of his life and apparently not know anything about how B society works. Yeah. Yeah. This this whole film just literally makes no sense. I mean and then every everybody does the same thing every day. You'd think somebody would have mentioned it to him. Yeah. yeah. And then John Goodman shows up during the court scene to be like the evil Southern judge. But then he was the good guy. And Jerry Seinfeld's Barry B. Benson is actually the bad guy because he almost destroys society. Yes. Uh-huh. So it's like, what's the point of this film? Why does this movie exist? Mm -hmm. It's so confusing. I'm so confused by this film. So anyway, um, this is how 
uh, this movie came about. So the NBC show Seinfeld ran for nine goddamn seasons. Yes. And I think of Seinfeld. We call those the dark ages. Yeah. I think of Seinfeld whenever TV shows are canceled quickly. Because the first season of Seinfeld fucking sucked. (laughs) It was only like five episodes. Originally, it was called the Seinfeld Chronicles. The first season was fucking horrible, and everyone said, you should cancel this. But NBC had faith in the show, and they had faith in Jerry Seinfeld, and they stuck with it. Whereas nowadays, they will cancel a show after three episodes. Mm-hmm. You I, know? He, he is just somebody that, he, he pissed me off even in his stand-up acts before having gotten to Seinfeld. That's why I didn't give much of a damn about watching Seinfeld. Yeah. You know? Like, can you believe they're still working on Tide? You know, remember he used to do that whole bit, and he just pissed me off with the line. Maybe, maybe if you have problems with blood stains, you have more serious problems than with, than with Tide. Yeah, yeah, like you fucking period, you moron. Yeah. <laughs> no, blood stains is a real laundry issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just went to the store and I saw sugarless chocolate. Who's that for? It's for diabetics. That's who it's for. Yeah. yeah. So but but yeah, they will cancel a show very quickly nowadays. And if they did that to Seinfeld, then the TV landscape the TV comedy landscape would be very different. And, you know, and to be honest, I would catch an episode of Seinfeld here and there, and, you know, it was okay. But it was not so okay that I really wish something better was on. Yeah. You know? I was a big fan of Seinfeld for the sole reason that there are two full episodes of Seinfeld that revolve uh, around Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yeah, I, I... Yeah. We probably discussed them before, but I missed those. Um, they're the episode where they are stuck inside of a Chinese restaurant because they just aren't calling their name. Uh, in that episode, which is considered like a classic episode, they're waiting to to get food before they go and see a showing of Plan Nine from Outer Space. Yeah. And 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 it's like maybe we should just go home. You can't go home. This is Plan Nine. It's the worst film of all time. Mm-hmm. What about the other eight plans? Why Plan Nine? Like like I can hear Jerry Seinfeld's fucking voice. <laughs> and so then like the next season. So then they don't go and see the movie. So then the next season, um. Jerry Seinfeld sees like a, a poster for Plan 9 on the street. Oh, they're showing Plan 9 again. Come on, Kramer. We got to go see Plan 9. And so Kramer tries to sneak a coffee into the theater. And so when he sits down, he spills coffee all over himself. And then that turns into like this big plot line for like two or three other episodes. But it all originates from him going to go see Plan 9. Yeah. But see, now that's exactly. They are. They are some of the people that I was trying to talk about last week who like The Room. Yes. Those people yes. don't give a fuck about Plan 9. No, no, they do not. It's just cool to like Plan 9. Yeah. But they don't yeah, like that's... Plan 9. They just say they like Plan 9 because that's cool. Yeah. That is very true. We have to we have to bring back the word posers. Yes, mm-hmm. that would be a good that would be a good use of it. They are posers, just like yeah. horror fans who say they really like the Human Centipede. No, you don't. It's a horrible movie. You're a fucking poser. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, the room is a little more difficult. I could see that more of a, a, a of an even mix, 
Yeah. Because there is a lot to hate watch in it. It's hard yeah. to deny its hate watchability. Oh, but yeah. I in no way believe that all the people who say they like the room like the room. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you there. Because they're fucking posers. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, Seinfeld, it was originally called the Seinfeld Chronicles. The first season lasted only five episodes, yada, yada, yada. The show was a major success. And when it ended, people were eagerly awaiting what major project that Jerry Seinfeld would follow it up with. And he did a few things, nothing too major. He was a spokesperson for American Express. He co-created a TV show called The Marriage Ref with his uh, fellow stand-up comic Joe Papa. Yeah, uh, and and he did a lot more stand up, yada yada yada. Then he announced a big time movie, DreamWorks, mm-hmm. who was they were already riding high. They had done three successful ass Shrek movies and a Madagascar, which was huge. They decided to spend over one hundred and fifty million dollars. Mm-hmm. On a Jerry Seinfeld anim- animated movie for kids, that's a lot of money. So I am assuming that most of that budget just went to casting and buying Jerry Seinfeld more cars and or coffee. <laughs> they really pushed this movie hard, too. They, they thought it was basically the second coming of Shrek, for shit's sake. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld did a crap ton of press for was it. it. He did a... Wasn't there something about him dating an underage girl right around that same time, though? I believe so, yes. I yeah. do believe I, I believe that, yeah. Jerry Seinfeld did a series of live-action commercials that were a big-ass deal, and it's like him and Chris Rock, and they're dressed like their characters, and they're, they're trying to do a scene on a giant windshield as they're spraying windshield wiper fluid on them. Uh, uh, there was even a whole episode of 30 Rock that centered around Jerry Seinfeld and fucking B-Movie. <laughs> there was a 30 Rock episode, for oh, shit's Lord. sake. It's a great episode, though. I love that episode. That's where they come up with Seinfeld vision, <laughs> where, they can, where they can computer-generate Jerry Seinfeld into their popular shows. <laughs> so the movie came out. B-Movie came out. It cost $150 million to make, and they spent so much freaking money on ads, on advertising this goddamn film. The film made, and this is both domestic and international, okay? Okay. Made $287 million in theaters. What? What did it cost? 280, 200 and it cost 150 million to make and it made 287 million dollars in theaters. But when you consider how much they spent to advertise this piece of crap, if it made any money, it made made 50 maybe 50 bucks. Huh. You know, it it barely made anything. So um like so many movies that we have done here on the podcast, like so very, very many, 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 many movies that we've done on the podcast, um, DreamWorks put it all on the line with Jerry Seinfeld and B-Movie. B-Movie bombed. So that should have been it. But then in 2015... Um, B movie started a new life on the internet. Yeah, and, and, and it—I I guess it's like a room sort of thing, like a like like a like a shtick. Like it's like this is a bad movie, and it's fun to make fun of it. the The way it first started was for whatever as a prank, people would post the entire script of B movie on Facebook. And apparently doing so, it's so much fucking text. It's literally just 
a massive, massive block of every line in the film. Doing so causes certain phones and tablets to crash. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it, which is why I did that a few hours ago. I noticed that. Yeah. I, I so, found a website and it's just here. Copy this and paste it onto your uh, Facebook page. Uh, it will either crash people's phones or just piss people off. Either way. Have so fun. so it's it's a modern spam has risen from the grave. Yeah, kind of. Because do you remember the origin of spam? Um, I believe it's primarily made of horses and dogs. You're close. When when the internet was new, back when it was still like Usenet and email and IRC, you know? Yeah. No web or anything yet. Your email box was a very little thing. And it was not meant for writing your life story or anything like that. You would shoot somebody a quick message. You know, that's what yeah. email was for. But if somebody pissed you off, you sent them the Monty Python spam routine that clogged there their box. You go. And you would have to get the administrator to clear your box. Yeah. So you would basically take down their email with Monty Python spam. And that is where the word spam comes from. Yeah. And Hold why on. we call that spam. So that sounds exactly how B-movie is being used. Yeah. yeah, basically. Hold on a second. I want to try one of your lines here. Hey, honey. I'm the administrator. Do you want me to clear your box for you? <laughs> she just gave me the eyes. It didn't work. I was hoping it would work. There's nothing you could do to make IT sexy. Yeah. Nothing. But I did I find, mean, we I call them fucking it. floppy disks, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> you yeah, know, you're yeah. starting from a deficit position there. Yeah, that's not too hot. But I did find it interesting the way that, that the B-movie would scroll, I found interesting. So I copied and pasted it onto my Facebook. What I originally tried to do was just copy and paste it onto the Messenger app and send it directly to you, but it wouldn't let me do it. It only got like about half of the script, and then it gave up. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, then let's just fuck it. Let's just put it on my Facebook page and see what happens. So I, I put it on my Facebook page. It is a massive thing. If you're looking at Facebook on a browser, then it's just this massive block of text that you got to scroll through. But if you do it on a phone, then it can fuck me certain phones. And the thing that I found interesting is that when someone would like it on my Facebook, it, it, when someone would like that on Facebook, and then I, it gives me a notification that, like, Deborah Whedon liked this post. So I click on that to show <laughs> me the post, to show me her like. What happens is my uh, tablet, which I'm using right now, it's Natasha's tablet, but my tablet, I gave you credit. My tablet will have to scroll through the entire script in order to get to the tiny part at the end that shows the like. Yes. And it's so weird to see the entire script of B-movie scroll by automatically. <laughs> really is really weird. Really, It's like uh, the opening to Star Wars on meth. <laughs> so, so that's fun. I'm, I'm fucking with people on Facebook. Then in 2016, this is where B-movie really got popular. In 2016, someone created a video. Uh -huh. And uh, the original video isn't around anymore, but there is a shit ton of copycats because this became really popular last year. Someone created a video where where it's the entire film B movie, but every time someone says the word B, the film goes faster. Yes, I I, I don't think I've ever watched it, but I've seen I've I've seen them go by me. Yeah, it's only like seven and a half minutes long. So, uh. This video became so fucking huge before it was removed from YouTube. Now there's copycats, but the original was seen over 17 million times until it was removed. <laughs> nice. And that started a trend. And now there are all these things where it's like, uh, like uh, 
Shrek, but every time there's a fart, it goes faster. Uh, B movie, but every time someone says B, uh, the entire B movie plays. That's another one. I saw one today, B movie, but every word B is replaced by the N word. <laughs> that's that's one I saw this morning. And um, there's one bizarre one where like a B movie, but every time you say the word B, the film gets harder to see. Okay. So it gets to, the, it gets to the point that like 15 minutes into it, it basically looks like a Hunter S. Thompson fever dream. <laughs> There's a shit ton of these. And the weird thing is, is that Maxwell will be on YouTube and he'll go, uh, oh, look, B-movie. I want to watch this. Maxwell has seen B-movie, but every time they say B, it gets faster. He's seen that like 20 times. <laughs> he thinks it's hilarious. Daddy, look, the movie's going so fast. And it's just become, B-movie has become kind of popular now. It's become a popular thing to make fun of. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It's it started off a, a new life on the internet is just you know kind of a fun film for young uh, computer savvy YouTubers to shit on. <laughs> and it deserves it. It definitely deserves it. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna shed a tear. Oh, and, and and there are shirts. There are shirts too, where uh, you can purchase a shirt and in very small print, it's the entire B movie script. Oh God. Uh, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Emerald just showed me a picture of a video. The entire Ice Age pentology, but every syllable is replaced with the entire Toy Story trilogy. But every second that the color green is in the frame, it is replaced with every video ever uploaded on YouTube. But every 10 seconds, every episode of The Simpsons plays. But every word with a vowel is replaced with the B movie. But every time a B is shown, it is replaced with every episode of SpongeBob played backwards. How long Basically, is it? I, no, I think, it's, I think it's fake. But that shows you the sort of thing that's happening now on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, I also saw one today, B movie, but the color yellow is removed. That was another one I saw this morning. Okay. Or B movie, but without the bees. That was another one I saw. It's basically about the girl who owns the flower shop and her relationship with her, uh, uh, uh with her jerk boyfriend. Yes. So that was that was a good one too. But yeah, B movie is kind of popular now. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, and, and it, dude, your girl, your girlfriend is dating a bee now. Time to admit something went wrong. <laughs> yeah, can they do it? I'm a bit confused by this. I, I'm thinking it has to require scuba gear. I, I can't scuba see gear. Any other way. Uh, yeah. Other way. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, Natasha's chiming in here. We're talking about sex, so we got her attention. I don't know if you focus on the clitoris. And he flapped his wings and they didn't vibrate a little bit. Yeah. That, that might yeah. work. Yeah. Or he could stand there and use his wings. Yeah. That might work. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, according to uh, sexology expert Natasha, yeah, be human sex is entirely possible. Okay, okay. But you know something else? We fucking do know goddamn well how bees fly. I am yeah, tired yeah. of hearing that shit. Yeah, yeah, that is a bit ridiculous. I don't have the formula in front of me, but it exists. Yeah. We know how bees fly. And I'm not exactly sure why, but anytime I see like a group of flowers, I always automatically like hear myself in Jerry Seinfeld's voice at the end of the film. For whatever reason, every time I see like a group of flowers, I automatically just bees, <laughs> flowers, pollen. Like that—that's an automatic for me now. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maxwell, come here. Maxwell, come here. Maxwell used to watch. There was a period in time of maybe about a year where every day Maxwell had to watch the B movie. There were some times where Maxwell would watch the B movie and then it was done. And I was like, well, it's over, Maxwell. Do you want me to put anything else on? And he would go, yeah, can you put on B movie? <laughs> I'm like, really? You just finished watching B movie? Yeah, I want to watch it again. I like B movie. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. I mean, there's worse things you could be seeing. Yeah, I guess. You know. I mean, my son is not doing the drugs. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a callback to uh, uh, sex dolls. So Maxwell, you you have seen the movie B movie, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you like it, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about it? It's about dead bees? It's not about dead bees. Oh, is, is it, you don't know why I like it? Yes, that's what I would like to know. Because there's bees and honey! Because there's bees and honey. Okay, gotcha. That's a good, that's a good answer. That might so uh, he's just a bee and honey fan? Well, it's getting kind of late, Max, so I don't think yeah, you can watch the bee true. movie right now. Maybe uh, tomorrow when you wake up, I'll put bee movie on for you. Or maybe I'll just put a B movie. Do you want to watch Attack of the Puppet People? No. No? Are you sure? Yeah, it's a good movie. It's about a mad scientist who shrinks a bunch of teens. <laughs> Teen Dude, shrinkage. Get it together. What's wrong? Speaking of shrinkage, fuck this B movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jerry Seinfeld has like a popular show now, but can you really call? An 11 minute cracked series popular? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's possible. No. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld hosted the successful 11 minute long cracked show. Comedians in cars getting coffee. Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. You're doing the same shit we would do. Except you're getting money because you're Jerry Seinfeld, not because it's good. Yeah. You know. I don't have a plot breakdown for this movie because fuck this movie. Yeah, the hell with it. Bees! It, it, uh, it was but just it was just a string of things that really didn't make any sense. And then it yeah. ended. Yeah. The part that really makes me uncomfortable is when uh, Barry Benson yeah. ends up on the windshield where he meets Chris Rock, who plays the mosquito, mm -hmm. whose name is Blood. Yeah. Already, right there, that's kind of a bit racist. But beyond that, they start talking with each other. And Barry says, oh, well, why don't you find yourself an, a nice mosquito girl and settle down? Oh, mosquito girls are always trying to trade up, <laughs> trying to get themselves a dragonfly. Mosquito girl don't want to be with no mosquito. And it's like, OK, now this is making me uncomfortable. Yeah. Because <laughs> now we're talking about race in, in by the makers of Prince of Persia. Mm hmm. You know? Mm hmm. Again, Jerry, this is a movie for kids. Okay? You need to be aware of that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Smile it back just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Odd fucking film. Kids come home from the movies. Daddy, what are the Black Panthers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there is no company that makes honey where the workers are cackling about how stupid bees are yeah yeah and and that and, part also really upsets me and that whole that that whole plot line was like are you fucking ki are you gonna try to guilt me out of eating goddamn honey now yeah. seriously yeah. can we do anything anything at all. Yeah. Without being shamed by the perverse liberal left. 
Goddamn right. What? What? What are they doing with the honey anyway? Yeah, they make the honey, and we get the money. <laughs> Stupid dumb bees. What are like, bees is... gonna do with money? <laughs> yeah, there is no, there is no conversation. <gasps> You're gonna be a starer. that may i love that so much i love that so much it's so stupid your our son is going to be a starer (laughs) you're gonna be a starer There's that whole scene that's directly lifted from The Godfather where he's in the pool. He's floating in the pool with his yeah. sunglasses on and his parents are trying to talk to him because he's, you know, I've heard you've been going out of the hive, spending time with humans. You need to work on your career. What happened to stirring? And he finally just like gets off of the flotation device and starts sinking in the water. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the honey. Thank you, honey. Honey. <laughs> you see what I did there? Mm-hmm. I called you honey, honey, because this movie sucks ass. <gasps> How dare you? How dare I? How dare I? See? Yes. I would just... I was, I? I was just playing. I love you. Maxwell, are you coming here to say goodnight? Okay, say goodnight to me. Thank night. you. Say goodnight to Bunny. Goodnight, Bunny. Come over here. Come over here. Say goodnight to Bunny. Goodnight. Goodnight, Maxwell. Give him a kiss. Give him a kiss. Give the podcast a kiss. Thank you. The podcast says goodnight to you. We hope you have happy dreams. Dream of large women. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Carrie Elways. Yes. Did you see today they released a preview for the new Saw movie? They're rebooting the Saw franchise. I did not see it. It's a reboot? Yeah, it's a re- it's technically a reboot. Like they find this woman and she's killed, and they say, "Is is is there any uh is there any indication of the killer on the body?" Yes, someone cut a jigsaw piece from the side of the woman's face, and then they're like, "But but the jigsaw murderer has been dead for ten years. It can't be him. It can't be." But then all of these all of these uh like elaborate murder traps keep getting set and all these people are in this game. It's basically another Saw movie except without Tobin Bell as the jigsaw murderer. Yeah. Because this is like or any other recognizable people in the franchise. They're it it's essentially a reboot. It's a sequel, but a reboot sequel. It's a reboot wool. Yeah. I uh, he he is another person that I heard uh, on the convention circuit is really pretty much a douchebag. Really? Yeah. He'll sit and sign autographs, but he listens to his, uh, he listen well, at the time when I was hearing it, he listens to his iPod the whole time. Huh. Like, no, dude. People are paying, people are paying you good yeah. money to spend a couple of minutes Kissing your ass. Yeah. Get that fucking thing out of your head. Talk to the people. You're charging them 50 bucks for you to to scroll your name on a picture. Yeah. Nobody wants your fucking picture. They want to say that they they love your movies. Yeah. That's what they want. I love that. I love that picture that I saw of uh, some guy getting a Brent Spiner to sign a picture of uh, C-3PO. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's like, here's something you might not know. If you if you pay Brent Spiner forty dollars, he will sign anything. He might not be happy with it, but he will sign anything. <laughs> and it's him like and it's a picture of Brent Spiner being so fucking upset and angry, but still signing an autograph on a picture of C3PO. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I freaking love that. I, and I heard that Brett Spiner, toward the, toward the, coming into the movies, he got to be pretty much a douchebag, too. Yeah, well, the like the last, what, two or three Star Trek movies were pretty much all him, you know? Yeah. Especially that last one where, like, he's dead and he has a clone or, like, a whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. No. That, I... It, nemesis. Scream, yeah, Nemesis. Star Trek Nemesis. Fuck that movie. No, don't make her scream. I'm not even sure if I've ever seen that one. It's fucking horrible. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, it's okay if you didn't. But that's all I got. You got anything? Uh it sucked. It sucked. Yeah. Uh, the animation sucked. wasn't even good. No, it was not. It was a clunky ass film, which is weird because they spent 150 million dollars on this thing. So I'm assuming that most of that money just went to Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, if we were going to go on a scale from one to ten, okay, uh, out of Leo the Lion, food fight, and B movie. Mm. I would have to give B movie like a four. Yeah. Food fight like a three. And then Leo the Lion like a one. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. But like that's the company it's running with. Yeah. For the animation in this thing. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty horrible looking. It is pretty goddamn horrible looking. And they weren't even good looking bees. I mean, maybe make him look a little bit more like Jerry Seinfeld, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Just winging it here. That yeah, might be an idea. And is, it, and is it possible to get Jerry Seinfeld out of New York? <laughs> I don't know. Like, just, just, I, I just realized that. It might be like, a restraining order thing. There's a good point. He might have like a he might have an ankle bracelet. Yeah. For all I know, he's been raping people in Philadelphia. But no, not a good movie. Not a good movie to yeah, not even not even a good enough movie to mock. Yeah. Yeah. It mocks itself. It doesn't need our help. Yeah. No, it's not that great. It's not that great, to be honest with you. It's not yeah. that great of a film. No. Yeah. But next week on the podcast, we are going to be talking about um, the most popular things to hate in each state. Yes. I have a uh, very uh, wonderful story about wild turkey. What is that? Whiskey? Is it whiskey? Bourbon. Yeah. It's bourbon. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about the film Begotten. I have a whole story about how I discovered the film Begotten that I'm really excited to talk about. Oh, okay. um, it's a nice story. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about. We're going to have another notes from the bookstore homework next week. Is I, and again, I apologize for this, but the 30 minute long uh, instructional video, you on kazoo. I Please have the story. Shoot me that link. I absolutely will. She apologizes, but she's really not sorry. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And next week, honey, you know what movie we're doing next week? I'm so excited. You can see it in my face. I can. You're I smiling really big. Yeah. Song of the South. Song of the South. Song of the South. Wow. Or, Wait, as I like... It's available for our viewers. I mean, yep. listeners. Really Archive.org. It's available there. I don't know. Last time we talked about it years and years ago. Was 
wasn't something that was so easily found. Yeah, now it's on archive.org. Until we found it that one time in Walmart. Walmart? It's on archive.org, and I think even that's probably a fluke. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's not... That should not have been on archive.org. That's why I wanted to grab it as soon as yeah. possible. Like, I started downloading it, and then I told you about it, yeah. you know? Because I was like, this could go at any moment. And yeah. it's kind of funny that this happened, because I had just... An article passed me by, you know, something that I just kind of saw the headline on. Something like... Whoopi Goldberg has something to do with Disney now, and she is yes. pushing for the release, the re-release of Song of the South, saying something like, Disney needs to own up to its history. Yeah, I, 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 I scrolled past that article as well. Yeah, I didn't yeah. actually stop and read it, So, it, but that makes it very strange that it suddenly popped up on archive.org. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see this film. I haven't seen it in a very long time. Eleanor, uh, turn around. I'm trying to put you in your seat. Uh, that was difficult, Eleanor. That was really difficult. Okay, there you go. I'm really excited about this film. I haven't yeah. seen it in a very long time. I haven't seen it since I was a kid, I'm assuming. Neither have I. But I do remember watching it as a kid, thinking to myself, I don't think this is how it was. <laughs> I remember I remember like being like four, five, six, seven years old and seeing this on TV. Yeah. And it would be like a UHF station, like on a Sunday at like, uh, you know, three in the afternoon. Yeah. And I remember watching this film, and it would be on TV, and they would show it because it was a Disney animated movie. Mm -hmm. And I remember being freaked out when they announced Splash Mountain. I'm like, how can you make, how can you spend a massive amount of money on a ride based on a movie that you won't let anyone see? <laughs> That makes no fucking sense. And now everyone loves Splash Mountain. It's everybody's like favorite ride. But they're hiding the film this ride is based on. <laughs> that makes no fucking sense. If you won't show Song of the South, why did you make Splash Mountain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so weird. But there's a it's, lot to talk about next week. I, I remember having the same kind of feeling for Gone with the Wind, the beginning of Gone with the Wind, being like, man, I don't think slaves were just that happy. I, you know, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm somehow doubting this. You know, everybody seems so cheerful. But regardless of race, gender, anything, religion, Every now and then, every human on the face of the planet finds themselves going zippity doo da, zippity a. You just can't fucking help it. Again, you just can't Disney's, help it. It's like the happiest song in the world. Again, one of Disney's most famous songs is from a movie they won't let anyone see. Yes. Mm hmm. These things make no sense. Song of the South is one of those things that you would see for like, uh, you would find a grainy version of for $30 at a comic book convention. Yeah. Oh, Song of the South, you know, banned Disney movie. Can't find it anywhere. $35. Uncle yeah. Remus, Remus is always just so nice and happy and cheerful and loving until you mention the whiplashes on his back. Yeah. Then shit gets real with Uncle Remus. Yeah. <laughs> Disneyland, Disney is hiding all of this. Like, didn't they win an Oscar for that shit? I'm sure they did. And I'm sure it was hailed as something like, finally, the true representation of the South in all its glory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
song or the, the song of the South, or as I like to call it, what Paula Dean sees when she closes her eyes. Exactly. This Paula Dean got in trouble for, for wanting to have that wedding. And the wedding that she wanted to have was basically Song of the South. Yeah. She had to have darkies who would dance. Yeah. So it should be a fun episode. Yeah, no, next week is going to be a good episode. And you know what? I mean, look how much we got already. We haven't watched the movie yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even watched the film yet. But I will say, I will say, I think this has been a great episode. I think this has been a great episode. No, I concur with your with your belief there, Bunny. <laughs> So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Cut and print.